At the end of 2018, Lenovo released this, the Lenovo Z5 Pro. This is far from the best phone of 2018, but it has certainly caught the eyes of many due to its price tag of $290 and $330 for its 6 gigs of RAM, 64 gig or 128 gigs of storage respectively, for a phone that packs in 95.06% screen to body ratio, currently the highest in the world, a manual sliding mechanism which hides two selfie cams and another two on the rear. This all screen display is no slouch either. They have housed a Samsung OLED panel for this phone which offers vivid and rich colors and supports HDR10. The phone itself may not be a flagship killer, but its display is one of the best I have seen. Taking a look at the build, the phone sports a very tiny chin under its immersive display which is protected by Gorilla Glass 3. There is no speaker grill at the top of the display keeping things clean. Instead, it is hidden under the slider along with its two selfie cams and infrared facial recognition sensor. The slider itself feels solid and easy enough to use. It has a glossy lined finish in the front and a textured lined finish at the back. On the left of the glass bezel, you will find the clicky volume rocker. On top, there is a dual SIM tray with no support for expandable storage. On the right, you have the power button. And at the bottom, you will find the single firing speaker, USB 2.0 Type-C port, light sensor and notification light. At the back of the phone, you have a dual camera setup and dual tone flash and neat Lenovo icon at the bottom of the black ceramic back. When taking a look at the build, you may have noticed that there is no cutout for the fingerprint sensor, and that is because it is actually built under the display. Once set up, you are treated to a small variety of animations and a superb placement of the sensor. Many under display sensors are placed near the bottom of the display, but this one is placed a little higher up which feels a lot more natural to use. I have used many in display sensors and I can happily put this right up there with the best alongside the Mate 20 Pro. It is identical to the Mate 20 Pro sensor and I could even go as far as to say slightly better than the one found on the OnePlus 6T. It is fast, accurate and a joy to use. The only complaint I could have with the sensor is that it cannot be used until you double tap or lift the screen to wake since there is no always on feature in order to preserve battery life. As I mentioned earlier, the phone houses an infrared face unlock sensor, which is quick to set up, fast to use once the slider is down, and even works in complete darkness. It is not the fastest, but is certainly more secure than the regular face unlock found on phones such as the 6T. It is no 3D face unlock, but is a nice middle ground when it comes to security and speed. One problem I did face when using the IR face unlock was setting it up and using it in very bright daylight in very cold temperatures. When setting it up, it kept telling me that my mouth or eyes were blocked and that I should move my head to the left or right. After minutes of struggling, I finally got it set up, but even after that, it couldn't recognize my face and thus I was unable to unlock the phone using face unlock outdoors. I am not sure whether it was the cold weather or daylight affecting it, but when I went back indoors, I could set it up and use it without any issues at all. Hopefully this will be addressed with a future OTA update. Once you are in the phone, you will be greeted by Lenovo's own ZUI 10 skin over Android 8.1 Oreo. It is slightly disappointing not to see ZUI running Android 9 Pie yet, but there should be an update sometime in 2019. ZUI 10 is clean, very user friendly and more similar to stock Android than what I was expecting but fortunately you can use a custom home launcher which had me quickly switching over to Nova Launcher for more customization, something that many Chinese phone manufacturers lack. Shooting over to the settings menu you will be happy to see that the phone includes NFC for payments and pairing as well as Bluetooth 5.0 which is rare to see in budget smartphones. The settings menu is simple and there isn't too much to customize but there are a few nifty features which work quite well such as 4D gestures which allow you to clap your phone to make a payment, chop it for the flashlight to turn on and even twist it to open the camera app. You can also slide the screen down to activate the selfie cam but this only works when you use the intended ZUI launcher. Lenovo have also included full screen navigation gestures but they are quite different to what is out there and don't quite make sense. You swipe up from the bottom of the screen to go back, swipe and hold from the bottom of the screen to go home and swipe in from the left or right of the screen to view recent apps. This is not my favorite implementation of full screen gestures, but I am a sucker for them, and after a few hours with the phone, I became quite the master, and they work surprisingly well. If this is a bit strange for you, you can always opt for the standard three key navigation buttons, but bear in mind this has minimal customization. One more thing worth mentioning found within settings is ZUI Lab. This includes game mode, which optimizes performance in gaming, 
multiple space, which allows cloning of apps so that you can use multiple versions of the same app if you have a different account and is not limited to how many you make or which apps can be cloned. Once again, something that has not been done before. Another feature within the lab is App Flash Launch which allows AI to optimize app speeds based on your usage. The phone is snappy and smooth thanks to the mid-range 10 nanometer Snapdragon 710 chipset, which is found in many budget smartphones such as the Oppo R17 and Vivo Nex A, but those phones cost around $150 more than this. The benchmark scores are similar to those phones too, around 160,000, and the temperature never gets too hot even when gaming. Speaking of gaming, I have noticed no lag even when playing graphically intense games, and the bezel-less display makes for a truly immersive experience. Jumping between social media apps is snappy, and can be even faster if you remove the animations found within developer options. Many apps can remain open at once thanks to the 6GB of RAM on board, but we will have to see how that stacks up when I bring you a speed test later this month. The camera app includes plenty features to keep a smile on your face, such as photo, AI, video, panorama, and pro mode should you want to better your photography. There is also an included super night mode, which can be used when taking pictures or videos. There are two lenses at the back in a vertical setup with a minimal angled bump. The main sensor is 16 megapixels with an aperture of f1.8 with PDAF, and the secondary lens is 24 megapixels with the same aperture and is used for optical zoom. Yes, there is a telephoto lens in here. What is not included is OIS, EIS, or even AI stabilization, so make sure you keep your phone steady when taking a snap. The pictures come out decent in daylight situations. There's some overexposure at times and things can look a bit sharp, but overall the pictures come out clean and clear most of the time. Moving objects can come out a bit blurred at times, but I found that even with my shaky hands, I could get a pretty great shot even without any form of stabilization. Portrait pictures come out alright, but there is no option for portrait mode at all or any way to blur the background without using professional mode or a third party app once you have taken the photo. When it comes to using optical zoom, things look great and there is barely any detail loss in 2x zoom, but this has been implemented better in higher end phones. Surprisingly though, zooming in more than 2 times, things still looked pretty sharp and the digital zoom retained most of the detail. In low light or nighttime situations, things can be a bit on the dark side but still come out better than expected for a phone of this price. When using the included super night feature, things brighten up nicely and there is no need to wait for a few seconds in order to get the shot like on a Huawei phone. That being said, I was actually pretty disappointed with what super night mode actually did. It brightened things up for sure, but the pictures took a major knock in detail and things came out pixelated. I can only expect this to improve with future software updates. When it comes to taking videos, you are limited to 4K and 1080p at 30 frames per second, but that is understandable at this price point. 4K comes out great, but things are shaky. 1080p is much the same with slightly less detail, but slightly more stabilization. If you compare this video recording to a flagship phone, you will be disappointed for sure. But if you compare it to any other phone at this price, you may land up being more surprised than you would think. They have also included slow motion at 120 or 240 FPS, but this is limited to 1080p and it doesn't do a very good job. Where you would expect video recording to come to another level on the Z5 Pro is night recording due to its included AI super video night mode, but this is not the case here. The videos come out worse than with the feature off, and while it does brighten things up, the loss of detail is significant. Once you slide the screen down, you are greeted to the selfie cams. The main camera is a 16 megapixel lens with an aperture of f2.2, and the secondary lens is 8 megapixels with the same aperture, which is used for depth sensing and the infrared face unlock feature. Taking pics in perfect lighting using the front cams come out crisp and clear. Lenovo made sure the front pics come out well, since their main audience are selfie lovers for sure. You can also notice a bit of background blur here, but once again there is no option for it, so it's up to the software to decide whether there is a subject in the frame or not. The good thing here is that there is a sense of background blur, unlike the back cameras. Recording using the front cam is limited to 1080p at 30fps, but this is forgiven since even the best of the best have the same limit. When it comes to speaker quality, the earpiece does a great job, but unfortunately, whenever you want to make or receive a call, the phone prompts you to slide the screen down, making things feel a bit retro. The earpiece also doubles up as a second speaker and pairing it with the bottom mounted speaker and Dolby Atmos, things sound deep, rich and loud, even when comparing it to the best phones out there. 
However, to truly enjoy the dual stereo speakers, the slider needs to remain down, which kind of defeats the purpose of having an all-screen smartphone. But nevertheless, it still sounds great when the slider is in its place. Nothing sounds muffled or downgraded, just a bit softer. As you may have noticed, there is no headphone jack present within the build of the phone, but they do include an adapter and it sounds just as it should. If you do lose this, you can be rest assured that all other adapters work on the phone too. The phone is paired with a 3350 mAh battery and easily got me through a long 15 hour day with enough juice left in the tank to do some light reading before bed. It is not going to outlast Mammoth batteries currently out there, but it does the job well. Stay tuned for my battery drain test on this phone, which should go live during this month. There is no wireless charging here, but should you run low on fuel, you'll be happy to know that they have included an 18 watt fast charger in the box, which shoots your phone from zero to 100 in an hour and 48 minutes, which is on par with the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. But bear in mind that the Note 9 has a 4,000 milliampere battery. This is not groundbreaking, but is still classified as fast charging in my books, and you will unlikely notice any difference when plugging it in charge for a couple of minutes during the course of your day. If you would like to see more stats on the charge times for this phone, click the link within the card above to see it in action against other top end phones. Other than the fact that the IR face unlock works poorly outdoors, I did notice another issue which seems like a bigger problem. When outdoors in very cold weather and very bright sunlight, I noticed the undertone of the screen itself. The undertone gave off this nasty yellow look thanks to it being an OLED panel and I could actually see the magnetic sliding mechanism underneath. This could be due to having too few layers of screen on top of the slider or it could just be an issue with the software. Either way, Lenovo need to address this issue soon with a software update or recall devices before selling any more. Bear in mind that this does not happen at all when indoors with very bright light or when it is an overcast day. With that being said, it is hard to recommend the Lenovo Z5 Pro to anyone even as a budget smartphone since its problems potentially ruin the whole experience. However, if you can overlook these flaws along with the poor low light camera performance or have faith that these issues will be addressed in the near future, then this is still one of the better budget smartphones out there. It is not waterproof, there is no expandable storage, it lacks a headphone jack and does not include a flagship processor, but for this price there is a lot to love. It has the highest screen to body ratio in a phone for the time being with no notch. It has a Samsung AMOLED display which is rich in color and very bright. It has 6GB of RAM and a decent amount of storage. It has a sliding mechanism, Dolby Atmos stereo speakers, infrared face unlock, an under display fingerprint sensor which works brilliantly, a great Snapdragon 710 chip inside which gives better than average performance, looks and feels premium and only cost $300. But I can't help but feel this is a work in progress prototype from Lenovo. If they spent a little more time testing the device and pushed the launch a bit further back, this would be the budget phone to beat. But it is hard to justify a purchase with the current issues at hand. The only reason one would rush out and buy this phone as is, is for the cheapest way into a truly bezel-less display. Lenovo is set to launch a follow-up to this phone just two months after its release, and that phone will be called the Lenovo Z5 Pro GT. It will have the same internals as the standard version, but takes things to another level with a Snapdragon 855 chipset, meaning this will be the first phone to include the latest chip from Qualcomm in 2019. The phone will launch at the end of January for around $400, which is ridiculously cheap for a phone with the best chipset around. But if they do not address the current issues they have with the current Z5 Pro, then it may not be worth a buy either. As soon as I can get my hands on one, I'll be sure to let you know if the issues have been dealt with. Until next time guys, this is Technic, 